Amazon EC2 has lots of different instance types that come in pretty much any shape or size to meet the needs of any workload you might want to throw at us. They're all named a little cryptically, but it's nonetheless systematic. The larger this number here, the newer the generation inside the CPU. The t-shirt size after the dot, that reflects the size of the machine you get. Now the number of permutations in this scheme is kind of mind-numbing. There's 654 instance types that we've created so far. They're grouped together into 107 instance families. But what if I told you that there's only three instances you need to care about that will cover more than 90% of your HPC workloads? Welcome to the HPC instances. These were designed with HPC in mind. They're all built for speed, they have great memory bandwidth and high-speed networking. We've taken everything out that didn't need to be there to support HPC workloads and put lots of things in to give you all the controls you need to pin processes to the right cores, change the memory bandwidth per core, and even to wind up the clock speed to warp factor 11 if that's what you need to get your code producing insights as soon as possible. They're also really low on cost. If you've looked at AWS in the past and thought our pricing wasn't quite right, you should have a look again with these instances firmly in mind. Hopefully it'll surprise you in a good way. The three HPC instance families differ mainly by CPU choice, memory per core, and storage options in one case. But rather importantly, we've built three different instance types with three different CPU architectures because you've all asked for choice. There isn't one architecture that rules them all. That would be too easy, and this is HPC after all. The HPC 6A and HPC 7A are built using AMD's Epic processors. Four gigs of RAM per core, no hyper-threading, so a core is a real core, not a thread. Newer is usually better, so while HPC 6A kicked everything off last year with 100 gigabits of EFA networking, HPC 7A, which just landed recently, has 300 gigabits. HPC 7A with 192 cores is twice the size of HPC 6A, and has twice the memory to keep the same 4 gig per core ratio. We run all these CPUs pretty hot, so 3.6 gigahertz in the case of the AMD units is what we do because they're in our data centers and we know how to cool things, especially things we've built. Boxes you might buy from traditional hardware providers are spec to run in a lot of different data centers with cooling that's uh, questionable or variable quality in many cases. So most of the time you can't buy hardware that runs this hot without the vendor hitting you up for higher warranty costs because they just don't know how to control for how good or reliable your cooling systems are. The HPC 6ID is powered by Intel Xeon Ice Lake CPUs, but with a twist. These are fat ones with a terabyte of RAM and a lot of NVMe SSD local storage. As you well know, HPC has an application for every occasion, so we're pretty sure you'll have a code you want to tell us about that needs this kind of RAM per core and just can't live without access to blazing fast local disk. Now that's especially true for ANSYS Mechanical, where IO to the temp files can become a constraining factor unless you have them on local storage, in this case 15 terabytes of SSD. They have 64 physical cores and come with 200 gigabits of EFA networking. Finally, there's the HPC 7G, which is built around the AWS Graviton 3E. This is the latest version of our ARM64 architecture CPU that we design and build here in-house at AWS. They have 64 physical cores, 128 gigs of RAM, and 200 gigabits of EFA networking. They're single socket machines, so when you run them at scale for MPI workloads, they go toe-to-toe -to -toe with their x86 cousins. They're designed to use less energy, about 40% less in fact, for the workloads that we've tested. And the Graviton 3E processors in these instances also have a big advantage over their predecessors because they do about 35% more vector work each clock cycle. If you haven't tried Graviton, you should seriously consider it, but that's for another video. Now, let's talk about pricing. Small numbers of pennies per core is the headline. I'm showing you two prices here for each of the instance types. The first one is the on-demand price, and I've shown it in cents per core hour. On-demand is the price you pay with no upfront commitment. Just show up and start using it, and that's the price. When you're done, you turn it off and stop paying. We bill per second, so you don't need to pay for a second more than you used. You don't own anything, and so you don't have a responsibility for it once you're done. On-demand is pretty much what it says on the lid. 
At the other extreme is the three year all upfront reserved instance pricing. This is the number that's easier to compare to your on premises cost because it feels more like a capital purchase. A three year all upfront RI is what you'd pay if you wanted to buy one of these things for three years and expected to use it all the time. It's everything included, the machine, the electricity, the cooling, the data center, and an instant warranty replacement on anything that breaks. Because if you have an instance break and it goes offline, we just give you another one. I've expressed both of these prices as cents per core hour, mainly so you can compare the two. AWS prices are usually just referred to using dollars per instance per hour. I've normalized to a per core base here, mainly to make it easier to compare things that come in different numbers of cores and so forth. There's a bunch of purchasing options between these two extremes, but honestly, try them out using on-demand first, then think about what your usage might be and contact your AWS account manager to nut out which is going to be the best option for your circumstances. Which one do you want to use? The answer is that it depends, but let me offer you some advice. If you're doing structures codes or seismic, there's a fair chance you have cycles which need lots of RAM and lots of direct attached storage to keep the cores busy. Great job for an HPC 6 ID. If you need lots of low cost cores with four gigs of RAM per core, then HPC 6A and HPC 7A are your friends. You should do some testing to see which of these two will be better for your job. And I say this because newer is better is only true most of the time and not for every code. You might have that code that runs just as fast on a slightly older but cheaper unit. So why not do that? This is a cloud way of thinking. Try before you buy. Try on demand first before you commit to anything else next. Now, Finally, we didn't create AWS Graviton for the excitement of getting to work in clean rooms in those groovy outfits. The processor is extremely fast, and because it's our processor, we've done some tinkering to see if we can get it to really screen. ARM64 is not x86 though, so you'll need to see if your software is compatible first, or if your developers are up for compiling for a new architecture. But since it's quite a lot cheaper per flops, it's worth a look before you go too deep in any direction. But if you took all this advice in and these instances still don't suit your needs, we have 654 other instance types you can sift through. But the HPC instances are where you should start and probably where you'll wind up. The economics for them are just compelling. Last things to know, we don't offer these in every region. In the regions where we do offer them, they're only available in a single availability zone. This is one factor that helps us keep good utilization levels for them, which in turn helps us keep prices low. They also only come in one unit cost size. We don't sell you partial machine sizes for these. There's a lot of reasoning behind this, but for customers like you, who are typically looking to stitch a lot of instances together using MPI to run tightly coupled jobs, it doesn't make sense to sell fractional size boxes. The slightly confusing fine print around this is that HPC 7A and 7G come in various instance sizes. Usually in EC2, smaller instance size is us selling you fractions of a box and selling the other fractions to other customers. This is normal in the cloud and it's called multi-tenancy. It works great for other people's workloads because they mostly don't need a whole box to run some enterprise productivity app. But the smaller instance sizes in 7A and 7G actually refers to the number of cores we leave enabled in those smaller instance sizes and the pattern we use for turning cores off and on. It's really a cheat code for doing process pinning to ensure that you get the very best alignment between the cores you're using and the memory channels in the machines. If you have a code that's bound by the amount of memory bandwidth that can gobble up, it does you no good at all to stack all of the cores on a 192 core box with processors when you probably only need half of those to saturate all the memory lanes. But if you took a naive approach to launching jobs and only on only half the cores, then unless you expertly understood the memory architecture of our motherboards, you might accidentally stack them all on one socket, which means half of the memory in the machine is far, far away, at least if you measure distances in nanoseconds. So for HPC 7 instances, we've done the math for you, so you don't need to. Ask for a half size HPC 7A with 96 cores, and we give you the same whole box, but with half the cores disabled. And we've done it in such a way that the ones that are left turned on are the right ones you should be using to get the maximum access to memory bandwidth that we can make available to you. Importantly, we're still providing you the whole box with the same amount of RAM, the same network bandwidth, the same PCI lanes and everything else. So we charge you the same price. The reason we're so convinced this was a feature worth implementing 
is that a lot of commercial HPC codes are licensed per core. So customers asked us to help them get the absolute best performance per core that we could. Instead of trying to teach everyone in the world about a motherboard memory geometry, we just built the best options into the instance sizing. Like I say, this is a cheat code. We're not doing anything magical in the back there. But remember that this is different from the normal EC2 instance model and only applies to HPC instances beginning with the HPC 7 series. Be careful you don't mix this up with other things you read on our website for other mainstream EC2 instances. If you want to convince yourself that this works, check out the blog post that our performance engineers wrote, complete with application benchmarks. And that's it. That's the HPC instances in a nutshell. If you want to know more, go and plunder the documentation and the links on the instance product pages. The links are in the show notes. If you're enjoying these videos, please give us a like and consider subscribing to the channel so that we can keep making more to help you understand how the cloud works and to show you new ways to help all the scientists and engineers around you who use HPC every day to do amazing things. It's what gets us motivated as well. See you next time.